Hi, we are here to present on the um, Office of Student Advocacy and Support, and Tom Diem from Social Work is gonna talk about the vision, Ed Marecki from Student Engagement is gonna talk about how this links to student engagement. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the implementation of the services. Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, the, the vision for the Student Advocacy and Support Office, although we had no idea what it was actually gonna be called, was that no student on campus would need to drop out of school or have their uh, academic experience really negatively impacted by things that were out of their control, uh, things that were non-academic in nature. So things like uh, suddenly losing their housing, uh, uh, medical emergencies for which they had no uh, care providers, uh, food insecurity, all of those sorts of, of things that, that where life happens. And uh, we know that many students end up leaving school uh, or, or, or stepping out thinking they'll come back and then they never come back uh, because of things like this. And we wanted to create some sort of, of office that would um, help students address those issues, uh, but in an empowering sort of way. This is, uh, the project itself has been uh, the vision of Dr. Christine Stevens from uh, nursing. Uh, now retired uh, colleague of mine, Janice Laxo from uh, Social Work, and, and then yours truly. I think uh, most recently uh, we, we made a connection with Student Affairs with Kathleen when Christine and I went on a bit of a rant uh, at a, a Chancellor's Town Hall meeting, and Kathleen came up to me afterwards and said, can we set up an appointment? And, and that's how we kind of got started with this. We have talked about this in varying ways over the years, and you know, there's, there's much uh, leadership turnover here. And so things kind of come and go. Uh, some people are very supportive, some less so. This started out, the actual project, as a SIF proposal from Terry Simonson and Rose Graham in social work staff there who deserve uh, lots of props for that. Um, unlike most of the SIF proposals, th which are uh, temporarily funded, uh, the chancellor decided that this would be permanently funded. And uh, so it, it kind of, in some ways, took it outside the SIF process, but, but also left there. But that was how important that, that the chancellor thought that this was. Um, it also is an avenue for the placement, the practicum placement of MSW students. Uh, we placed, we'll be placing two students there each year at least for now, maybe more in the, in the future. And they are stipended placements, uh, so students are receiving uh, a, a stipend for their service there, uh, which, is, which is highly unusual in social work. Um, and we just see this as an incredibly nice marriage of, of the academic side of the house and the student affairs side of the house uh, coming together to uh, uh, make life better for all of our students, and hopefully for instructors as well, when their students are fed, housed, clothed, and not sick. So. I will turn it over to Ed. Thanks, Tom. Uh, based on this vision, as we started to develop this initiative, um, we decided it was going to be aligned with the Office of Student Engagement. And that was done intentionally to place uh, the Office of Student Advocacy and Support alongside other resources and procedures for supporting different student needs. Um, our goal as we build this out is truly to move to an area where we have true wraparound support services for students. Uh, and we feel like we've got a good start on aligning and networking different processes that are in place. Um, we know through our work that student needs can present themselves in a variety of ways. Um, they can come out through a crisis, they might come out through a behavioral issue, um, and networking our different resources, we're able to respond to students, even if it is initially presented as a crisis, we know that can just be the symptom of some larger things going on in their life. So to have um, this office co-located with some of the other things that we do, conduct, emergency aid, our concern process, really allows us to connect students with the appropriate resources and provide them with the best support. Um, over the past couple of months as we've been developing this in initiative, um, our message really is, our slogan has become that there's no wrong door that no matter how students can self-identify, if they're referred by faculty or staff, if they get to us, we're gonna get them connected in the right place. So I'll let Roseanne talk about how that's happening. So in 90 seconds, the implementation. This is to assist students in developing strategies to overcome barriers that um, prevent them from achieving their academic goals. And basically, um, we've been doing 
two thi three things, responding immediately to student needs, um, using a strength-based and student-driven model. I work with students to identify what they want to work on, and also work on increasing campus-wide acceptance of asking for help, and helping people to see that asking for help is a developmental life skill, and that's a good thing. Um, I use case management model that's been developing, but we develop goals and action steps, things that I work on and things a student works on. We work in collaboration, and we harness both on-campus supports. There are lots of services on campus that students don't know about, and also off-campus community resources. And um, this is how students can find me. We like to promote No Wrong Door. They could use the website, they can call my phone, they can walk in, they can use email, um, and I also do outreach. So ed or faculty will sometimes ask me to reach out to a student, and staff too, and I'll often do that via um, email. Um, and here are some examples of the kinds of things that I've seen about Probably 30 students, everything from case management intensive conversation to just a phone call with students. And these are all the different kinds of um, issues that I've worked on. And for time, I won't go through them, but there they are. You were like perfect, perfect. We did it. So we'll take questions. Questions. Oh, excellent. Hi, I'm Courtney Kroll. I'm the study abroad manager, and um, I also run a program at UWT called Global uh, Ambassadors. Uh, we have cohort meetings every month and talk about social justice issues. And this past month, we talked about food and housing insecurity on campus, and a lot of students. Um, had very had heard of your services, but were pretty confused. So I'm just wondering what y'all are doing to try to promote this on campus. Yeah, so I've been to various student groups. So I'll come to your group and talk to students. I've been in classrooms, I've been in staff meetings, and I've been in faculty meetings. So that's how. They can call me and I can come talk to a group or, um, and use those um, ways to reach me. So along those lines, given that there's no wrong door, what's the most common door? And have you been finding um, much success with faculty in class than referring a student over to you? So sort of a two-part. Um, faculty in class is increasing. Um, the door that they come through mostly is financial aid, and it's probably because I sit next to Tori. <laughs> so Tori's kind of got this on her mind, and she sees it as a resource two doors down. So she'll um, work with a student to maybe give them a short-term loan and then say to the student, and go down and talk to Roseanne. So I think it has to do both with the need and the proximity of my office. So. I understand we're not running a 24. What? Can you it's hear me? Oh, okay. Um, that we're not running a 24-hour crisis line. But what happens like after hours or on weekends or? Just... Great question, because <laughs> because that's the next part of the vision. Is that uh, I mean, Roseanne will be here, you know, roughly 40 hours a week. Um, but we also hope then to be able to utilize students to be a, a contact point for evenings uh, and Saturdays as, uh, as the program grows and becomes more uh, consolidated, uh, that those students will have the same sort of access uh, in, in their real time. You had mentioned that uh, students would, there'd be a way to keep students in here when we have a crisis. Um, is there a way to uh, help translate, translate that into a grading policy or uh, something to do with students who vanish for some reason or is that part of the discussion? I'm not sure I understand the question. Can you say it differently? So if we have students who have vanished uh, and they, they don't show up to class and oh. they end up getting a zero in the class, mm -hmm. um, is there a way to communicate that, yeah. the, the policy better? We, we do that. Currently, <laughs> um, and some of this depends on that, that variety of different resources that we have. And depending on a student's situation, um, 
I was just working with a student yesterday. Um, you know, they've had a crisis. Um, they've missed some courses this quarter. Um, where they were at, they were able to take some incompletes. They're going to do a hardship withdrawal for another course. So we work with and counsel them through what those options are. Um, I think, as Roseanne said, really empower them to make some choices. What are those impacts going to be on the next quarter? Are they prepared to come back next quarter? Are there resources that we could provide that would help them um, succeed moving forward? Um, so we look at that whole kind of network um, around each individual student and their individual circumstances and work directly with faculty uh, to find solutions that are going to work. I hope that just to add to that, I hope that faculty too, as I'm out talking to them, um, can see red flags sooner so that I can reach out to students before it gets to a conduct or a grade thing. And I've been doing some of that um, this year too. And that just takes a phone call or an email.